One world currency. The new world order. Those are the roots of trouble. I imagine that right now you're feeling a bit like Alice. Tumbling down the rabbit hole? Hmm? Let me tell you why you're here. You're here because you know something. What you know you can't explain, but you feel it. You felt it your entire life. That there's something wrong with the world. You don't know what it is, but it's there, like a splinter in your mind, driving you mad. It is this feeling that has brought you to me. This is your last chance. After this, there is no turning back. You take the blue pill, the story ends. You wake up in your bed and believe whatever you want to do. You take the red pill, you stay in Wonderland. And I show you how deep the rabbit hole goes. All I'm offering is the truth, nothing more. Well, we are opposed around the world by a monolithic and ruthless conspiracy that relies primarily on covet means for expanding its sphere of influence, on infiltration instead of invasion, on subversion instead of elections, on intimidation instead of free choice, on guerrillas by night instead of armies by day. It is a system which has conscripted vast human and material resources into the building of a tightly knit, highly efficient machine that combines military, diplomatic, intelligent, economic, scientific, and political operations. Its preparations are concealed, not published. Its mistakes are buried, not headlined. Its dissenters are silenced, not praised. No expenditure is questioned, no rumor is printed, no secret is revealed. But I am asking your help in the tremendous task of informing and alerting the American people. And now, welcome to another episode of Down the Rabbit Hole. Here's your host from federaljack.com. It's Popeye. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another live edition. It is September 24th, 2013. It is the Tuesday edition of Down the Rabbit Hole. And many of you who have been listening over the years know that I like to have, sometimes I like to have guest co-hosts. Not guests per se, but friends of mine that also do radio. And I like to have them come on, and I don't like to consider it them, you know, a guest and like pick their brain like I'm interviewing them because I already know them. So I like to have them come on and just hang out with me and ride shotgun. And uh, one of the most often uh, v- visitors or frequent visitors, I should say, wrong wrong terminology. One of the most frequent visitors, I should say, would be my good buddy Steve Stars. And tonight, Steve is coming back for two full hours. To go over a bunch of things, I'm I, I'm kind of fired up. I want to rip into something, but I'm putting that on the back burner right now. I'll rip into it in a little while. First and foremost, Steve, I want to say hi, and then I want to ask you, are you and everybody okay? Because I know you live out in Colorado, and Colorado just got deluged with water and floods. So, are you are you and your family and everybody okay? First and foremost. Yes, we are, and thanks for your concern, Popeye. It's good to see and or actually hear you on the radio again back uh, doing your show. I know you've know, been moving around, and you've had your computer. You've been working on everything like that, but you're a real trooper, dude. And, uh, you know, you're putting up some great uh, archives of all of these great interviews that you've had up there, and, you know, your entire federaljack.com system is a vital part of this huge archive of the information that we're going to be talking about. But yes, uh, getting back to me, uh, I'm about a mile from the South Platte River. You heard that 25,000 gallons of oil spilled out of, out of tanks along the sides of the river went down there. The people to a little bit to the east of us down river were flooded out, um, people out of houses. We had, I think, 200 homes lost right in that vicinity. Um, I think the death toll stands about six. Or, no, no, it's actually higher now. It's about seven. The flood came in a lot slower than the uh, Big Thompson flood that we had in 1976, but it still caught a lot of people off guard. We had people isolated, and as I said before, sometimes it's good to see the National Guard. They did a wonderful job out here. They're still out here plucking people out of lost communities. We still have people who are unaccounted for, so the death toll will go up. But uh, we don't know for sure how many of those people are just unaccounted for and how many of them are actually gone or dead. So, yeah, thanks for your concern. And thanks to all the people around the country who have been concerned about it. I know a lot of people have heard a lot about the flood and are probably tired because there's so much of this other important pertinent information that we're going to get to on this show tonight. 
I mean, it's just the news is just breaking out all well, over. The flood's kind of important too. I mean, not only the the human factor and stuff, but I mean, you have all those. Uh, you have uh, oil wells and fracking wells that are getting flooded, and uh, there's tanks filled with chemicals and stuff used for fracking that are flipping over, and uh, the stuff's in danger of spilling into streams, and there is oil and stuff spilling into streams. So, I mean, this isn't good. Uh, and, but then you also have the the human cost, you know, the, the loss of life, which is horrific, uh, people losing everything they have, their homes and stuff. Where can the listeners, if they want to help, because the Red Cross, I always tell people they suck, and anybody that's ever experienced the Red Cross knows they suck. So who out there, what local charities or organizations do you know of that are actually helping people in need that you would recommend the listener, if they wanted to help out, um, look up or you know look into? There's one good organization that I like called Mercy Chefs, and they're like a Christian organization, but they they like to claim that they can rival Salvation Army at presenting much tastier food with to a lot more people. And they brought a big 18-wheeler out here, and they're serving meals to anybody who needs them, and they can go anyplace else. So, friends, that's a good uh, charity because they could come to your uh, neck of the woods sometimes if, if something like that happens. So Mercy Chefs, check them out on the Internet and help them. Uh, and they're uh, cooking three meals a day, and that we uh, set them up in a big... Uh, parking lot like a movie theater parking lot we've been shuttling stuff out to people we still have a lot of folks of course who don't have flood insurance most people don't have flood insurance in colorado they have fire they have wind they have you know theft and damage and all that kind of stuff but flood is pretty rare and unfortunately we we do have probably i don't know of any specific flood uh, help assistance funds but we're starting to raise a few of those things and you can just check on the internet but people who are without homes right now uh, that's a difficulty for them they have no way they were wiped out i mean they were absolutely lost and when you talk about the dispersant the fire uh, dispersants and uh, fire retardants that were sprayed up in the mountains during the, the wildfires a lot of that came down in the water along with the oil. Uh, I don't know how many fracking chemicals in, in terms of actual canisters or tanks were ruptured that, that split. We had a lot of oil spill out here. And so that water, uh, Popeye, where it's going to go is down the South Platte, eventually merge with the North and become the Platte River, then into the Missouri, and finally down into New Orleans via the Mississippi. So all that stuff is going to be flowing downstream. And friends, uh, you know, we're sorry about that. And, of course, it happens to a lot of folks um, as you live along the river that these things happen. And and so we need to, you know, be aware of what uh, what kind of dangers are around, you know, watersheds and water tables and water plains. I am just about a mile. I can see the river from my house. I, I know down the road, and I watched it come up over major interstates and uh, wash them out. We have something like 35 to 40 roads out of there. We have people who are isolated, and we have people, who, farmers and great people who've lost their fields, and they're, sometimes their crops are covered by insurance, but other times you know, they've lost all kinds of other things like gear and equipment, livestock. It's been pretty bad. But I do appreciate all the concern and help and prayers and thoughts and good feelings that you have towards us folks up here in Colorado. And we're sorry about uh, the difficulties that imposed upon all of us because of this system. I don't want to get into conspiracy theories, but I think weather modification had something to do with this. That's actually one of the questions I have for you. Um, ah, because I have, I, when, I was, when I knew I was going to talk to you, today about this, about the Colorado floods. I wrote down a couple side questions off of just the, you know, the flooding itself that I wanted to throw out there. Possibilities. One thing was, is there any evidence of any type of weather control? Go back and look at the satellite photos from, you know, from two weeks before all the way up to the day of the event and see if there's any type of spraying or any type, anything that we, you know, any type of physical evidence that we could see because there is some. And then the other thing uh, which is like a side caveat to that when people would say, well, why the hell would they flood out Colorado with weather control? Uh, land grabs, just like Soros did in, in the Midwest. I've been saying this, for, and people, a lot of people seem to have forgotten this. Every time I bring this up, people are like, what are you talking about? Remember about a year and a half, two years ago, when the Midwest was flooded out, and the Army Corps of Engineers came in, and they blew all the levees up, and they flooded farmland that was perfectly safe and fine to save this decrepit, crappy, rundown town, which the residents were like, why don't you just move us out and flood the town? It's, it's a, you know, a crap hole. Why would you flood all that? Even the people that live there were like, this makes no sense. But they went in, and they blew all this, they blew the levees and flooded all the farmland. Well, Soros went in afterwards and bought all that up. Mm -hmm. 
and as we said before, you know, Popeye, this is about getting the family farm off their land. And that's what they're working very hard to do, whether it's by drought or by flood or by taxes or by blowing up levees or pollution. And they're doing that. They're trying to move people off the land. It's, it's part of the big Agenda 21, um, you know, the whole uh, whole plan here of trying to get us off of our own land so that we're reliant on the government to feed us and living in these uh, high-density human you know, chicken coop centers. And that's what our governor, Governor John K- Chicken Cooper, I call him, his name is Hickenlooper, and Joe Biden was here in town just yesterday. You know, they're all, all out here uh, telling us how much federal aid they're going to come up with. And they really have been pretty scant, in my opinion, in terms of real federal aid. Um, Colorado Department of Transportation is doing a lot, of course, and there are people who are helping. But, yeah, you're absolutely right. I mean, this is part of, of something, be it by nature or by just chance, they never let a good disaster go to waste, do they? Well, what did Rahm Emanuel say? Yeah, that's his quote, I think. You yeah. never let a good crisis go to waste? Yeah, something along that lines. You know, now... <clears throat> well, I mean, you- it's not... Look at this speculation that we're having here, this conversation for a second, is not, like, too far off. I mean, they trade weather. Yeah, they in the, do. In the, in the Chicago Mercantile Exchange, they they exchange weather commodities. So it's oh. how how beneficial could it be for somebody if a they knew it was going to rain in a certain area, and b not only if they already had money invested in things and move stuff around, but then go in afterwards, like I said with Soros, and buy up all the flooded land for pennies on the dollar as a yeah. form of a land grab, like you know Agenda Twenty One style. Absolutely. You know, and of course, you know, I've been very suspicious about the fires because we've had such hot, dry weather. And that was a big part of this because we were having record temperatures and all out to the east of us, across the plains, the temperatures were extremely high. That's what created this high pressure zone because it was hot, dry air. And then we had like a low pressure zone over Las Vegas and this monsoon action where water comes up from the Gulf of Mexico and moves actually north up across the Rockies and then usually disperses across the middle of the country which helps the farmers and uh, helps everybody but what happened was this high pressure zone just locked that water in in the Rocky Mountain terminal here and it couldn't get out and just started raining and it kept raining this wasn't like a flash flood friends that happened in 1976 when we had all this water that, that came down the big Thompson Canyon in 40 50 foot uh, you know, surges where it just it killed 103 people in less than a couple hours. What we're talking about here was an ongoing rain that just didn't move. It just stayed here. They've called these inland hurricanes, and that's really kind of what they are. It just it just stuck here, and it kept raining day after day after day after day. And I think Boulder got something like nine inches. Uh, we got uh, pretty close to eight to nine here ourselves. Um, you know, it, it, all in all, it was a lot of rain that just kept piling up, and we don't have the kind of watershed that a lot of, you know, say, uh, coastal cities do or places like that. We get 17 inches a year, you know, so half the year's moisture fell in a matter of two or three days, and it just kept piling up. Was that caused by chemtrails? Was it caused by the, this uh, process that why in the world are they spraying and what in the world are they spraying, those great films that we've had, and I know you've talked about them a lot, show you how they they actually use these uh, jet chemtrail uh, fuel mixtures to, to, to shuttle moisture across the middle of the country. And that's why it comes pouring down in North Carolina for two weeks and places like that. It doesn't rain in the middle of the country. And it looked to me like what was happening is they had that high pressure zone out in the middle created by the chemtrails, which were shuttling the, the water across. But then it was filling up here across the Rocky Mountains and no place to go being drawn up by this low pressure zone from the monsoons and from the you know the Gulf of California, uh, the Sea of Cortez area, and the Gulf of Mexico. And it had no place to go. I don't know. I can't say for certain. But I do know we had some very, very high record uh, shattering temperatures all across the Midwest just days before all this happened. Well, see, again, that's why we have to look at this stuff. It's, and it's not out of the the realm of possibility that it, they could do it. I mean, they have the capability to do this. And if they're already ex- like trading uh, weather, uh, you know, commodities on the stock market, guess what? You can bet that somebody will try to manipulate it for their own gain. Absolutely. Absolutely. And this concept of global dimming, of course, global warming is about gone to, you know, to the pits by now, especially with, with where we're seeing the... Uh, the ice caps expanding this year. It's, it's cooler this year already. Some saying we, we may be headed into a very long 
a deep cold zone at this per, at this present time. I don't know if that's true or not, but I can tell you one thing: they have been shuttling water across the Midwest and creating this drought for a long time using chemtrails, aluminum, barium, strontium, these things that they're spraying up there are preventing moisture from falling. They do that. They, they keep the air very, very dry. Out here, you know, water equals water. I mean, if you have moist and humid air, it's a lot easier to rain than if the rain comes in and just pours down it as what they call virga. If you know what virga is, it's just it's rain that never hits the ground because the, the dry air just eats it up. And that's what's been going on across the Midwest and across Colorado, all the way to Nebraska, Kansas, uh, you know, you, you look at Missouri and, and across that area too. All the, the big farmland in the middle of the country has been under this incredible drought, I believe, caused by chemtrails. Now, did that have anything to do with the floods? I think it's very possible that it did. The high pressure zone actually shunted all that water from coming out across the mountains and, and moving to the east as the westerly winds, you know, will take it as it, as they normally do. And I think it may have had a lot to do with with causing the water to back up here and flood. And it just, dude, I saw the videos. It just totally devastated portions of uh, Colorado. I mean, I saw floods growing up i've seen towns get damaged and stuff so that i mean it, it wasn't like oh my god i've never seen this before but i was just like wow yep. wow at the level of destruction and i'm willing to bet that a lot of those places uh, i was having this conversation with liam chef last week uh you know i'm willing to bet a lot of those people are going to get bought out and they're not going to either they're not going to want to build or you're going to have the the government come in i'm waiting to see if fema is going to come in but like no you can't build here because it's a flood zone Right, yeah, we'll, we'll keep up with that. And also the areas that really weren't even in the flood zone where the water just ran out, you know, low-laying land, farmland that just built up. You know, it wasn't necessarily flooded by the rivers, but by the just the ongoing rain. Yeah, we'll keep an eye on that. And, Popeye, you've done boat rescues in New Jersey, right? I mean, you know what it's like to get in there and get people out of houses that can't get out and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And uh, we had that all over the place. I mean, you can ex- once you describe what they're like when pe- when you show up and there's somebody there, maybe an older person or something like that, and there's three feet of water. And as they say, you know, a, um, a foot of fast moving water, and this water was moving fast. Well, we've done it in like feet. six yeah. and eight feet of water too, dude. We were in the back of a National Guard truck one time. We went down the we went down the end of the street to get this guy. That the only guy on the street that wouldn't leave his house, which I can understand, or whatever. But we had to go get him, and. Um, because they, they, he called, he finally called up and said, I want out. So now we have to go get him. And uh, they were at least make an attempt to go get him anyway. So we, we had to use the boat to get him because uh, we went down there with a deuce and a half. And uh, we were going down the street. And it, I was in the back with one other, one other firefighter. And there was a private driving, a private in the back with us. And a sergeant was uh, up in the, the front riding shotgun. Uh, and he was in charge of you know the the truck and the two of them and then they they answered to us basically and um we're in we're going down the road and i said to him i was like sergeant just take us down the end by the stop sign and then we'll we'll get you know the guy's house is two houses up on the right and we'll we'll you know we'll get the bearing and what's the best spot to try to you know pull the truck up to and we'll get him out and we'll get the hell out of here because it's right by the river and the current was i mean the current was so powerful at this point that it was literally bending the stop sign it was starting to fold it down because they yeah. if anybody that's ever seen floods afterwards you'll see stop signs bent at like a you know like an l you know they got like a what do you call it a 45 or a 90 no 90 degree angle that's what it is yeah and it, it's sitting there you know well that's what this was starting to do the stop sign at the end of the street was starting to get pushed down by the or pulled down by the current rather so we got about oh, i don't know about eight feet from the stop sign and all of a sudden the truck starts to hop deuce yeah. and a half yeah. That's a that's uh-huh. a heavy ass truck. Truck yeah. starts to hop, pop, pop, yep. pop. Bump, Sergeant bump. turns around and looks at me, and he looks, dude. His two eyes were like silver dollars, and he was. I mean, this guy <laughs> had, obviously he, he was an older guy, so he he already had. I'm sure he had experienced other things in his life, right? He looked at me. He was pale white, and he goes, "Sir, what was that?" I said, "That would be the truck lifting up." And as we're talking, the truck lifts up again. It would go about three or four feet, and boom, back down on you know all six tires. Or, and I, <laughs> I said to him, well, actually more than six tires, but you know what I mean, all three axles. And uh, I said to the guy, uh, I was like, Sarge, if you don't put this thing in reverse and get, the, get us the hell out of here in about 30 seconds to a minute, we're going to become part of the river. And then we ain't going to have to worry about rescuing the guy. We're going to need rescuing ourselves. So I mean, by, by this point, the water was coming into the back of the truck because those things have snorkels on them. 
So as long as you have the snorkel hooked up, you can drive around in the water. But uh, the water was just you know coming into the back. We're standing in the back, and these poor privates, these guys, these kids had to be 17. Well, they had oh, well, they're probably older than uh, 17. They're probably maybe like 18, 19 years old at the most. I mean, they were little baby faces. They couldn't have even been 20 years old, dude. And these two kids, the kid driving, you could tell he probably crapped his pants. He had never, uh-huh. never, ever experienced anything yeah. like that before, ever. Uh, and then we went back and we went and got one of the other fire trucks and uh, my buddy and I went back down and uh, the two of us and uh, one other firefighter, we, we, I drove as deep into the water as I could with the truck uh, and, uh, and then I, they hopped in the boat and I launched the boat and psh, off we went, grabbed the guy out of the house, came back, moored back up to the truck, got, out, got him out, you know, rescued the guy, dropped him back off at, at uh, headquarters and then Went on, went on about our day going and pulling more people out of their houses. We had a, a house collapse on its foundation, so the first floor uh, became the basement. Ooh, yeah. And then the second floor was now the first floor, and we had to go in and pull people out. It was, that was weird, walking around the second floor of a house in chest deep of water. So it, it, I've seen some interesting things. So that, that stuff didn't surprise me. You know, when I, when I saw the pictures and stuff, I expected it. But, you know, again, where's FEMA? Yeah, right. Where, 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 where's the help from our federal government that says that's what all the money is spent for? I mean, they, they spend money on lavish dinners, you know, twenty five, twenty six thousand dollars $26,000 on a dinner for politicians. Yet there's flood victims that could have used twenty five dollars or $30,000. I'm sure you could have done a lot of help for people with that money. What about the people that lost everything? And I'm gar- I guarantee you, dude, I'm willing to bet money that FEMA's going to come in and they're going to tell people that they can't rebuild in certain areas because it's now considered a flood zone. Yeah, and or it's polluted with oil, or it's polluted with uh, chemicals, or it's polluted with the one thing or another, you know, raw sewage or something. Yeah, we'll be watching that. I'll keep an eye on that. Just uh, you, you have to prompt me, but I will definitely. Uh, now that you brought it up, I'll be watching to see what happens to some of this uh, flooded land, quote flooded wasteland. That they well, doesn't have. anybody just think it's a little bit odd? And this isn't conspiracy theorist. This is a, a valid question. Doesn't anybody think it's a little bit odd that all these natural disasters happen? And then after these natural disasters happen, where, if you think about it, they, the, the disaster itself is totally within the control, uh, the abilities of being controlled. Uh, you look at the aftermath, it's always land grabs. People don't want, some people get discouraged from being there because they're just afraid. Others get bought out by the government, and then no one's allowed to build on there. And what used to be a flourishing community is now returned back to a beachhead with just sand dunes and, some, and you know, grass. And people go, oh, but look, it's returning to nature. Yeah. Don't you understand what they're doing? Get it? They're returning that, all that developed land back to nature. And what better way to do it than have nature come in and wreck things and then scare the crap out of everybody and say, you see what you're doing? You're pissing Mother Nature off. Yeah, this is, this is nothing unlike, you know, a storm coming in or an earthquake happening 2,000 years ago and them going, oh, you pissed the gods off. It's the same thing. Yeah, these things happen from time to time. I've lived here in Colorado most of my life. I've known the notorious South Platte to flood several times. I remember the big flood in 65. Oh, boy, I mean, dating myself now. But, you know, you're absolutely right. I mean, some of these areas never recover, and then they become government property, and then they become something else. And, and uh, we'll just have to keep an eye on it, Popeye, because this is the kind of stuff that they're doing, you know, that uh, they're stepping in on these disasters and telling us that they're going to help us. Uh, I was glad to see the National Guard this time, but FEMA's here. You know, Joe Biden was here today. I didn't even bother to go down to hear him. I, I don't like the man. Uh, and, and Governor Chicken Cooper, or Hickenlooper, as he's actually known, uh, you know, they're down here already. This is the guy that shut off the water on the farmers last year so that their crops dried up. This time, they were drying their crops up for just silage. You know what I mean? There, were, there wasn't any corn that you were going to eat. or I mean, they were just drying things out. And then the rain came, and then the mildew. And they can't use the, even the dried up old dead crops anymore. And this is a dangerous problem. So, yeah, it's it's been pretty bad. We've had uh, the, the uh, sewage system is backed up here. I mean, I live in a very, not in a nice place, but at least our pipes were working. Uh, I somehow get a chance sometimes to see how the other half lives or where they go because they had porta potties out there. They couldn't use their toilets or use their water for eight or nine days, and uh, it was it was bad news. And these are the kind of things that we're going to be seeing more of. You know, are we pre- prepped for this? Are we ready for these kinds of things? Are we ready for the power to shut off? Well, uh, look. What, 
Steve, you know what the problem is. Mankind is pissed off Mother Nature, and the Gaia spirit is going to come down, and w what we have to do is to avoid total anni annihilation, we have to move into these, these really condensed, tight, small cities and live like three or four people into a little room that's like 300 square feet for everybody to live in, and that's all. And then the Earth will be happy with us, uh, and only the rich, elitist douchebags will be allowed uh, to live in big, opulent uh, you know, mansions and have you know tons and tons of land for them to run around and hunt and stuff on and grow their own food. And you, but you, you, you yourselves, us, the, the the peons. This is them talking to us now. You can't do that. You can't have that lifestyle. The rest of us are all crap. Only only certain people can have that lifestyle, and we're all going to have to live with it because the Gaia spirit, you know, Earth is going to come and ooh, look. If we don't do this, we're going to keep having this stuff. Uh, well, what happens if they have control of the weather and that they can pull the trigger on events or stop events from happening? They yeah, know they well, can stop hurricanes from happening, dude. They know they can. They've done it. So if they if they can stop a hurricane from happening, and of course there's been the you know like Ben Livingston said, well uh, uh, first it was the lawyers they didn't want to be responsible if they accidentally tore you know made a hurricane more powerful things like that. Okay, I understand that, but you know. 40-something years, 50 years worth of practice with this stuff, by now you would think that they've figured out a, a good way to do it. I mean, hey, you guys aren't worried about sending a space shuttle up in, in, into the atmosphere or putting all these satellites and doing laser tests and, you know, nuke weapon tests out in the middle of the ocean and stuff all for all these years. That was no big deal. Lighting off an atomic weapon or a hydrogen bomb, hey, no big deal. That's okay. But doing something that could actually benefit mankind, well, we're scared because of the outcome. Really? That's the lame-ass excuse you're going to come up with and try to use? Okay. It's just garbage. All right, I'm going to cut us off, Steve, because the brake's sneaking up on us. Ladies and gentlemen, don't go anywhere. We will be back in three short, quick minutes. Stay tuned. Now that we're back, I want to get into something that really frosted my... Uh, oh, I don't even know how to put this politely. It just pissed me off. I'll, I'll put it that way. Um... Joe played this for me earlier, and we were just talking off air. I was hanging out in here with Snoring Dog there in the background, and uh, I was doing some audio editing. And he's like, hey, he calls me up and he's talking. He says, uh, he was like, he just saw this article, and he was like, hey, I think you might be interested in this. And he gives me the article, and he plays a news clip. And, and dude, I, I haven't had an emotional like response like this in a while i hearing this actually got me angry like it made me pissed off and i was like i need to go off on this tonight and he's like oh have fun with that did i sent you the the a clip to one of the yeah or a link to one of the clips but it's what for the listeners who don't know and i'm i'll set the audio up and then we're gonna play it and rip it apart but these kids were suspended until January. They were facing expulsion from school for playing with airsoft rifles. Now, people are going to go, well, if they were playing with airsoft rifles on the school property, well, then that, you know, Popeye, they deserve to be suspended. Well, I, I, I agree that if they were doing it on the school property, it would be in poor judgment and uh, at the very least, and it would be dumb. And, you know, yes, it would be... I, I, I don't know if suspending them until January is the answer, although... Being suspended from public school really isn't a, uh, a punishment, if you ask me. It's actually a blessing. Uh, but nonetheless, anyway, they suspended these three kids. That's the final outcome. And they got suspended because they played with airsoft guns on their own private property. That's right. You heard me. The school felt that they shouldn't be playing with airsoft rifles, period, because that's what this is. This isn't this isn't any logical thinking other than the people that are on the school board, you know, feel that they should impose their way of thinking on these kids and their parents. So these kids are suspended because they played with airsoft guns. They're toy guns. They shoot little plastic pellets. They were obviously toy guns. They were painted green, and uh, they have red or bright or red or orange tips, whatever it is. And it says "Zombie Hunter" in big bold letters on the side, and it's like a it's it's like a toy uh, 1911. It's exactly what it is. <laughs> and and yeah. the kid the kid's running around with it. It's a, it's a dude. It shoots little plastic pellets, and the school's like, "No, it's a BB gun." Oh no no, that's not a BB gun. If you'd like, I could show you a BB gun. There's a huge difference between the two. When I was a kid, we shot each other with little copper pellets. 
Okay, these kids are shooting each other with little plastic pellets. Okay, this isn't anything compared to what we did to each other when we were children. We threw rocks at each other. We would put rocks inside of snowballs and hurl them at our friends' heads to see if we could make them bleed. Ha ha, I threw a rock in there. I mean, kids are little scumbags, right? They, all kids play around and do stuff like that, but that, that's rough playing. That's how kids grow up to be, you know, tough because they fall down and scrape their knees. If you run and, you know, try to put them in a, uh, a, a, you know, a full body pad. That, what the, your kid's going to grow up to be a wimp. Why do you think we have adults now that they see a kid playing with a toy gun and they dial 911, which is what happened. These kids are on their own property. The school bus stop, there happens to be a school bus stop, I don't know, like 70 yards or 80 yards away or whatever, which is, that's, you know, like, couple, what's like 100 and something feet, right? So, or what? Uh, three feet to a yard, and if it's like 70, so that's what? Uh, 210 feet at least. So they're not on the school bus. They're, you know, they're at the school bus stop. They're over on this kid's private property shooting each other with toy pistols. And somebody drives up the street and sees them playing. And she dials 911. 911. Oh my God, there's kids chasing each other with toy guns. I know it's a toy, but you know, he appears, well, what is he shooting at, ma'am? He appears to be shooting at a target. It looks like it's in a tree. So? Well, he, but he's shooting a toy gun. Do you see what the news media and the politicians have turned the general public into? They've turned them into, oh my God, if you have a gun, you're a terrorist. That's what this country has turned into. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be blatantly honest. They've turned everybody into a bunch of pussies. That's what they have. Oh, oh Popeye, such harsh words. Shut up. That's the problem. You can't even handle me saying the word pussy. Seriously. This country is on its knees. Are you kidding me? Who, first of all, who the hell is the school, Steve? Yeah, right. This is absolutely absurd. Absolutely absurd. But this shows you exactly what you're talking about there. Dude, it's all... It, it, mm, mm, I'm, as you can tell, I'm, as my Jewish grandmother would say, he's all the klimt. Yeah, I'm... Yeah, klimt, huh? yeah I'm... Uh, uh, here, let me play the audio clip for you, and I'll have to stop it randomly through it, but check this out. Three Virginia Beach Middle School students face an expulsion hearing today. The school suspended them for possession, handling, and use of a firearm, but that so-called firearm was an airsoft gun. And when Senator Size Andy Fox heard the gun wasn't in school... Well, first off, i got to ask you, who the F is the school system to charge these kids with anything? The, the school charged them. Who's the school system? You're, you're, I think people are missing the basic point of this. Who is the school system to decide what these kids can and can't do on their own personal private property? That's the that's what's the point here. I mean, yeah, I mean it's airsoft rifles, but you, the school's saying they're charging them with discharging a firearm. What happens if the kid's father took him to a shooting range, and they put a vi they took a video of it, and the kid put it up on YouTube, and somebody saw it at school? Would suddenly, well, he handled a firearm while, you know, at a private firing range with his father, so we want to expel him because he touched a firearm. Um, that's none of your business what the child does when he's with his parents. That It's their child. You don't own that kid. Ugh. Not even ten seconds in and I'm pissed off. He began asking questions about this, Andy. Nicole and Tom, this is a story of whether the Virginia Beach City public school system is overreaching. The guns weren't in school. On the bus, according to the students, they weren't even at the bus stop. For them, this is a case of zero tolerance reaching to your private property. Oh, I well, think it's ridiculous. So, Lane Joe Carl. Well, go ahead. It wasn't even guns. You know, I mean, it, these were airsoft toys. But anyway, go ahead. Yeah. No, you're right. See, again, like, oh, big, bad, scary guns, Steve. Ballo thinks it ridiculous the Virginia Beach City public school system suspended her 13-year-old son Khalid and his friend Aiden Clark because they were firing this spring-driven airsoft gun on the Caraballo's posted private property. Including my son. He's private property to me. He's my property, not the school's property until he is in their school and on their school bus. Well, no, he's still not their property lady. Let's get that straight. You shouldn't even you, you shouldn't even acquiesce to that on air. But anyway, even at, at the bus stop. at the very least at the bus stop. Right. Khalid and Aiden aren't only suspended but recommended expelled for possession, handling, and use of a firearm. So Khalid and Aiden are over there in the yard taking target practice with the airsoft gun, waiting for the school bus. And 
This is the school bus stop, 70 yards away. Virginia Beach 911, where's the emergency? It all began with this 911 call, September 9th. A neighbor sees Khalid doing this in his front yard. Who is he pointing the gun at? Um, it seems to be like a tree. He had, he, it looks like, um, like almost like he had a target or something. The tree right in front of his yard. Taking target. Uh, so what's the problem? What's the problem? And wait, she admits it's a toy gun. Practice like this. The caller also knew the gun was not real and said so. It's not a real one, first of all. The airsoft guns are designed to be non-lethal with plastic pellets, not copper BBs. I want to see if it hurts, okay? So now, right there. That hurt. Yeah, you're close. Right here. It hurt right here. Hey, like, do you hear the mother? Yeah, you're close. There's, there's a... There... They're sitting at the dining room table, and the reporter sticks his hand out like a foot and a half from the kid and says, shoot my hand. And he goes, well, that hurt. You know, it's stung. There's a little bit of a welt on my hand. What, really, genius? You're normally not that close when you're shooting at each other. The kids are chasing each other and running around. It's a plastic little pellet. When I was a kid, we shot each other with BBs and slingshots with steel BBs. Are you, I mean, you know, like ball bearings. The good old wrist rockets, the kind you could put through a... You remember the old, you know, the, the old uh, sheet metal or aluminum sheds they used to have where you could put them together in, in the backyard? They were really, really thin. And you, you could, given a, the, the right tool, like a, a nice size uh, ball bearing and a wrist rocket, you could put that ball bearing through both sides of the shed or through I, my mother couldn't stand it because my shed looked like uh tar, it had, had target practice it was all holes in it and everything she couldn't stand it yeah, they were arrows great. i used to fire into it when i was a kid you know we used to oh, yeah. i used to go in my backyard and shoot my compound bow in my backyard i had targets lined up and i would sit there and shoot for hours i mean yeah, I, now i'd be considered a terrorist yeah, I had an archery set. I had BB guns, I, and I have to admit, I got into trouble with my BB gun. You know, but that's nothing like these little airsoft pellets. I mean, I my son has had one of those, and we were playing with it as well. I mean, at about four or five feet, what what's the range of those? Maybe about ten or fifteen feet at max. I mean, yeah, well, like, it's, it's a little pistol, and it, yeah. you know, you it's this is a spring. I have a little airsoft pistol. It looks like a Glock. And it's spring-loaded. It doesn't, I mean, you could hit somebody maybe at 15 feet with it, you know, 15, 20 feet at the most, but by the time it's traveled that far, it's a plastic BB, so, you know, it's not going to be highly accurate. Now, I'm sure there's more powerful ones, maybe something that's like, if they have, like, uh, something you put batteries in, maybe it's, it shoots, a, you know, maybe one of the rifles shoots a little further. But these kids were running around with hand guns, hand guns, toy hand guns, not real ones. Toys that shoot plastic pellets. Ladies and gentlemen, what is wrong with this country? Really? Yeah, it's absolutely astounding. I mean, the, it's hard to believe that the police would even respond to this or, or even write it up. As well, no, they, the, police, the police were like, they, they, they were not even going to, the police were like, we're not dealing with this. So the school went and did it. The cops didn't charge them. The cops are like, they're not doing anything. They're playing with toys. It's an airsoft gun. Who? This is a waste of my time, basically. No, no. The school system is charging them, Steve. That's why I said, who the F is the school system? Like, so there's... i have looked at the story. Who is the school system? Do they even report? And who is the caller? <laughs> That's what I'm saying. Like, well, they, they go into the... They get into it in more detail. There's, I think there might have been even a second caller because um, they play another... Uh, in in another clip they play because uh, this was from yesterday and in another one that they played today uh, there was a, a different sounding woman on the phone but you can hear the one woman admits that they're playing you know they were playing with toys it's just ridiculous I'll, I'll get back to the audio you, you, there's more to it wait it gets better there's a little welt right here that's what we're talking about ironically the very next day that 911 caller's son was playing with Khalid and Aiden in the Caraballo's front yard <laughs> Couldn't make this up. So the woman calls nine one one on her neighbor, who I guess she. Oh my God, he's shooting a toy gun. He must be a terrorist. But he couldn't have been that much of a threat because the next day her kid was playing with them in the very front yard where the kid was shooting his toy gun. So why did you call nine one one then? Why did you Why did you call nine one one? Because that nine one one call apparently is what led the school to investigate and you know suspend these kids until January. So because this woman. Called nine one one and somebody else called nine one one, right? Freaking out like a bunch of idiots, and she knows these kids, even though that she knows them. 
She called, and now these kids have all these repercussions, but the next day, her son is playing with these kids. So how much of a threat were these kids to the, the general public or other children? They weren't. And by the way, this is just as bad as the kid getting suspended from school. Or no, he didn't get suspended. He got arrested. That's right. He got arrested for doing a fake shooting with – he had an um, a app on his phone that turns your phone into like a first-person shooter. And whatever the camera sees, you can like press a button and it'll, it'll like have this video game gun shoot at them or whatever, right? And it records it. So the kid was playing with it, I guess, a little bit at school. But he also played with it at home and made you know, a couple-minute-long video. And his mistake was he uploaded it to YouTube. They arrested him for it. They said he was terrorizing people with this thing. It's a phone app. It's a frigging phone app. And in this, in this instance, the cops actually arrested the kid. Those cops should be fired and lose their jobs immediately. And anybody that's willing to prosecute it should be fired and lose their job. Because it's a waste of taxpayer money. And that means that they don't care about actually doing their job. They only care about looking good and getting numbers and we're hard on crime. F that. They should be fired. Okay? And this school, these, it, these school officials, the best part is it was a three-person school board that voted whether or not they were going to get expelled. And they, they voted on it today. They're just going to suspend them till January. But it was these three school officials, the, the school board voted on it. And they, they voted unanimously that these children should be suspended because this is – we have zero tolerance pol- – this is what they said. We have a zero tolerance policy on this. No guns allowed. Um, it's not your property. I don't think you people are getting – you know, like a lot of people are missing the point with this because I've seen I've, – I've heard some other people argue this. And I think some people are missing the point like as shown by how complacent the parents are. Later on, you'll, you'll, you'll hear uh, – the, one of the fathers chime in, and he, he's a little more on point. But it's, it's a matter of who, who gives the school the right to tell you what you can and can't do on your personal property. There, what the school says is by the school board's decision, the school board – and now, by the, if I were the parents, I would sue, okay, because you can't let this precedent stand. So they have to sue, and people should – if they don't have the money, people should get together and help raise them legal fees to sue the school, okay, and find a good constitutional attorney to sue the school. The school can't do that. The school doesn't have the right to tell them what to do in their own house, they can't do that. And the school says with their ruling that they have the right. Their zero tolerance policy extends to your private property. So if you buy your kid a toy gun, you're, you're going to get your kid suspended is basically what they're telling you. See, they're trying to tell you, and that's not even, that's not even, that's maybe the outside message. The underlying message is your behavior at home will determine whether or not your child gets punished and is allowed to get educated. So don't do things at home that you shouldn't be doing. Do you have guns in your house? Oh, I'm sorry. What, you, go to, you go to federaljack.com? Oh, you go to Truth Frequency Radio and you listen to those, those evil radio shows there? Your kid can't come to school anymore. Not until you stop going to. In fact, what we want to do is we're gonna, we want you to talk. We're going to suspend your child until you turn off the internet service in your house. What happens if they say that? Or they say, oh, you grow your own food? Oh, well, you're a terrorist. So we can't have that. Or, or you don't trust the government? Oh well, we're going to suspend your kid till January because you taught your kid that you shouldn't. He, they shouldn't always trust the government, and that they should question the government. I mean, that's that's where this it's a slippery slope. Once you allow the camel's nose underneath the tent, the whole damn camel is going to come in, and you ain't going to get it out. The only way to make sure that camel stays out, and it sounds mean, but you got to stomp on a damn nose, and that's what we need to do to this, because this yeah. is out of control, Steve, out of control. Well, I agree. They should be sued, but at best, what these parents should do is pull these kids out of that school anyway. Anybody who teaches kids along the lines of this kind of thinking is not worthy of being a teacher or an educator, especially when they intrude into somebody else's private property and get huffed up over some kind of a a toy gun issue that has nothing to do with the jurisdiction of the school. So, you know, I I would hope that these uh, two boys are attending some other either private or charter or online or homeschooling uh, from this point on anyway. But, you're, they, said but they, they, they said they're going to homeschool them, but only yeah. until January, and then they're going to hope that they're going to have a hearing again to see if the kids can be allowed back into public school. I wouldn't bother. Why would you waste your time putting your kid in a place that obviously look what they do? They think they actually have a moral standing with you. You know what I would do is I would yank my kid out of the school system, and I would attain an attorney. And I would get with the other parents, and all of you as a group should go after the school together. 
get get a proper lawyer or law firm or whatever and go after the school and hammer the school and show the school that they don't have the, the authority, whether it be legal or moral, to tell you what to do in your private home. Well, we have to look out for the kids. You're not looking out for the kids, okay? And these adults that called 911 for children playing with toy firearms, you're all pathetic. You are all pathetic excuses for adults. You shouldn't even have children yourselves, okay? I don't agree with sterilization and all that stuff and eugenics and all that. You know what? Sometimes there are people that just shouldn't be allowed to have kids. And people like you are a prime example, okay? Seriously. Yeah. Cowards. Cowards. A child playing with a toy gun and you wet your pants and dial 911. Ugh! What? We, we don't live in America anymore. This isn't the United States of America that I grew up in. At least when I was a kid, this country still had some balls. This is absolutely ridiculous. If my mother were alive, she'd be puking over this type of thing. Okay? She's probably rolling in her grave, and she's cremated. Seriously, this is just absolutely out of hand. My mother fought with the school system over stupid things like this, but, I mean, not to this extent, dude. Like, I've told you off air. The things I did when I was a kid, and we all know because we all did the same things. If we had done any of that stuff now, like if we took our ki ourselves as children from back in the day and brought ourselves to the future now, dude, we'd all be arrested. Oh, yeah, I should have been. <laughs> I was a couple times, you know, <laughs> with a couple of my little pranks, you know, mostly dealing with firecrackers and stuff like that. But, you know, absolutely right what you said uh, there, Popeye. The school should be sued, and the uh, furtherance of their educational costs should be uh, paid out in damages to these two two young boys, uh, whether it's online or whether it's private tutoring or whatever, uh, the school should pay for their education. They are at fault here, absolutely at fault. And it's just like you said, the camel under the camel's nose under the tent. This has got to be stopped. It has to be addressed. They should be sued. They should pay. And uh, the people who are involved with this, the, the cranky citizens, should be reprimanded as well for interfering with you know the uh, the, the private uh, affairs of other people's lives yeah, i mean it, this was definitely an intrusion upon their privacy and uh, it was absolutely out of line and again we can't let these things go friends it's like you said you know um, i don't get quite as emotional about it and i understand how you feel about it popeye but i think it is you're right when you say this has to be stopped. It has to be uh, addressed, and, it, and there had, has to be a punishment and retribution for this kind of in, just insane, piteous. There are certain you know, things that'll make me snap in about three and a half seconds. Like there's there, there are certain things that there's no gray area with me. One of those is my wife, right? Anything it, it, pertaining to her, you know, I view somebody as harming her. There is no gray area threat, you know, taken out, right? You know, so when it comes to personal property and people's just outright violations of their their own personal space it's it's one of those things man and it's not me i'm not personally connected to this but it just infuriates me who that f is the school system who do they really think they are i mean does this not tell people take your kids out of public schools homeschool there's your answer and then what they'll start doing is they'll start making homeschool illegal like they did in germany watch yeah. Yeah, you know, we used to carry around air pop rifles uh, in seventh and eighth grade to play games with them. And these were these weren't anything. That, these were just like we, remember pop we guns, used to be able know. to ride down the, the street when you were a kid with your BB gun on your back. Oh yeah, oh, yeah. and nobody cared, or your your you, you know whatever a pellet gun, whatever wh whether you had you know BBs or pellets, it wasn't a big deal. I really? got into too much trouble with my BB gun. But I my did. father I got... was a kid. He used to run around with a shotgun and go hunting before he went to school. You know, they'd go down in the meadows, uh, uh, down in the the meadowlands, and and go chasing whatever down there, go hunting or go target shooting down there, and then go to school. And they would sometimes they would take their guns and put the guns in the lockers or whatever, or you know they would take or otherwise if they were if they had time they'd go back to the house and drop it off and then go. And it wasn't a big deal. A kid walking down the street with a you know a twenty gauge shotgun to go hunting out in the meadows at some, at, at four thirty five o'clock in the morning was not a big deal. Because the kid was already self-sufficient and taught what was right and what was wrong. See, the problem is now parents are lazy pieces of crap and don't want to raise their kids. Well, I have to work. I have to do this. Then don't have a child. Okay? Then don't. It, if you're going to have a kid, raise the kid. Don't have an, uh, a friggin' nanny do it and don't have the television do it. Okay? 
That's the biggest problem is these people plop their kids down. Not everybody. I'm not bashing everybody with kids. There's a lot of good parents out there, too. Don't get me wrong. But these people that, you know, they bitch. Yeah, my kid, you saw an airsoft gun. Your child is going to grow up to be useless because you're a useless parent. So your job as a parent, my mother understood her job as a parent wasn't to protect me. Her job as a parent was to get me ready for adulthood. That's your job as a parent. Okay, it's not to protect the child from every little bad thing that's going to happen. Guess what? Your kid's going to fall down and scrape his knee. Your kid is going to fall down and bump himself. My mother, you would think my mother would have been overprotective. And at times she, you know, her mother, her motherness, you know, motherliness, whatever would kick in. But you would think she'd be overprotective of me because when I was born, I had, you know, I had some issues. I almost died when I was a baby. I was born at seven months. So. You would think that my mother would be like, oh, my God, you killed my baby. And she was quite the opposite. She prepared me for the future because she knew one day she wasn't going to be around. And, th and then what? And then what? What happens when you're no longer around? How many kids go to college and they start crying or they freak out in their first day of college and they have to go back home or they can't handle college life? They don't know how to adjust living on their own. How many people, you know, their, their, their parents die in some, maybe there's a car accident or something and they die at an early age. And the person doesn't know how to deal with it because they don't know. And it's not that the parent died and it's emotional. It's because that person did everything for them and now they don't, they don't know how to do anything. Oh, I don't even know how to wipe my own ass anymore, Steve. What do I do? I mean, that's, that's the level it's getting to. And then everybody's offended at everything. You know what? I, I, I'll give Adam Kokesh for this. He has a T-shirt and I, I, I might not be quoting it verbatim, but it's something that says uh, getting offended is bullshit or something like that. And I agree with him. Okay. Don't, I'm offended. I don't care. I don't really care if you get offended. How does that sound? I don't care. That's what the First Amendment is about. The First Amendment doesn't say you can say anything you want unless it offends somebody. I mean, really? Then people can just run around claiming, I'm offended, and things get censored, which is what you see now. It's stupid, man. It really is. Yeah, it's basically mind-altering psychological conditioning that they're, they're trying to impose upon us as the society. And I know those kinds of people, too. People who are afraid, who live in a basement. You know, I mean, I know, people, I know a young lady who's 23 years old. We have to, uh, well, I won't go into the personal part of this. But we have to take her to, to work. You know, and you know where she's working? Head Start. She's training these same kinds of kids. She can't face reality, but she's dealing with all these kids with disabilities. And, uh, I mean, this is a tough job because it, it, these, there's no money for it. You know, we're running out of this kind of funding and all this kind of stuff. But, I mean, she has a life there where she's trying to deal with these kinds of youngsters and can't drive a car. She's 23 years old. Uh, you know, she can't have a life. She's a sheltered person who, who has trouble. Now, I don't know her exact psychosis and I'm not a psychologist or anything like that but she's one of those people also who stays glued to this kind of ideology that they get off the television set there's a lot of people out there Pop, well that's right? a that's yeah that's a huge problem Steve that's a real huge problem I'm gonna cut us off because the break is sneaking up on us uh, but I want people to ponder what we just talked about I mean who is the school system? Does Do they have the right to tell you what you can and can't do in your own personal private property? I don't think so. Okay, and you need, we really need to check our, you know, do a sack check uh, on this country as a whole. All right, we'll be right back. Don't go anywhere, ladies and gentlemen. Stay tuned. Three minutes. Ladies and gentlemen, we are back with our number two here on tonight's live edition of Down the Rabbit Hole. I am your host, Popeye from FederalJack.com. It is September 24th, 2000. And 13, Rod and Shotgun with me for hour number two is my good friend, brother from another mother, fellow researcher, uh, filmmaker, radio show host, all-around good guy, my guest co-host for this evening, Mr. Steve Starr. Steve, welcome back for hour number two. Hey, glad to be here again, and thanks for keeping Federal Jack going, the, the website, federaljack.com. I always put a plug in here shamelessly for Popeye because he forgets to do it, but, you know, you've really done a great job, Popeye, and we just can't let that website go down. Keep it up and running, buddy. And uh, am I the brother from another planet? Oh, another mother. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's you, probably. <laughs> did, 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 did you ever see that film, uh, The Brother from Another Planet? <laughs> that one kind of cracked me. But anyhow, yeah, it's good to be back with you. It's good to have your audience out there, great folks that uh, 
help and support and listen, you know, and uh, that's what makes it happen, man. Thanks for hanging in there and doing your, your, your best here, Popeye. I do appreciate it. And by the way, if anybody goes to Federal Jack and it looks kind of weird uh, on the front page, because if you go to one of the links and you click on something, it, it looks normal, but the front page looks a little wonky when you go there. There's some stuff missing, and uh, the slider doesn't have any pictures in it right now. It's because uh, I'm doing some work behind the scenes on it, and I have to actually. I'm I'm waiting for somebody to to fix something for me. So as soon as it gets fixed, um, that'll be all well and you know good. But the problem is, see, everything's volunteer, so it's when anybody has time to do things for me. So that's part of the problem. Uh, anyway, it, it's under construction. We're we're doing a few things. I've been changing a few things and adding a few things and removing a few things, updating most of the stuff. Uh, the archive section for the radio show actually is much more user-friendly now. When people click on it and they go to the archive page, um, there's two different options that you can click on that will take you to the exact same spot, the downloadable page where you can download all the shows. Uh, but that, now there's, it's a, there's one that's you know written words. I turn it into a hyperlink, and there's literally an image that I made a button, so you can't miss it. Either way, there's two ways to get there from that page. And then underneath it, it'll say, Down the Rabbit Hole with Popeye 2011, then same thing, 2012, same thing, 2013. Well, each one of those is a link. If you click on each one of those, like say you click one, you go, oh, I want to hear something from 2011. Well, if you click on down the rabbit hole, 2011, boom, it opens up a page just for all the shows uh, uh, from 2011, and they're in order from the oldest to the newest ones down at the bottom. So it starts off when my, with my first show, back when I first went on air, to the end of that year. And then 2012, it starts off with January and goes down to, to December. And the same thing with 2013. It starts off with January and goes down to December towards the bottom, meaning the newer shows are always down at the bottom. But I did that because I have so many shows that people would go to the archive page and they'd be scrolling and scrolling and scrolling and scrolling because they'd have to go through all the older ones to get to the new stuff. So what I did was I actually just broke it up into pages. That way it makes it much easier for everybody. So if you, just go, to, if you go to the archive page, you'll see the hyperlink for the download page and then the widget underneath it, which is just an image. You can click on it. It acts just like a button. It opens it up in a separate tab. And then underneath that are each the each link for each year uh, of archives. So everything from 2012, everything from 2011. And then there's a special broadcast one, which is where like stuff like uh, our Lincoln broadcast and stuff like that is on. And then there's um, if I've ever there's one for if I've uh, done uh, guest spots, like I've guest hosted a show for somebody, or if I've been a guest on a broadcast. Uh, there, there's five different links there, and those open up five different pages. Because I had that all on one huge page, dude, and uh, people were going there, and people, were very loyal listeners, would go. I would see them going every day. And I realized one day, I was like, you know, it's annoying when I update it, and I have to go and scroll down to the bottom and make sure all the links are working. So if it's annoying for me, it's got to be annoying for the people going to the website. So I went in and I kind of made it a little bit more user friendly, and it's still, like I said, it's still under construction. We're we're doing a few things, but uh, in the next over the next couple of days, we'll have everything uh, finished and back up to a hundred percent. But I just wanted to, since I I had to do some work on the back end, and I wanted to tweak a few things and perhaps remove a few plugins here and there. I figured I might as well take the time to do all the work that I want to do instead of doing one thing here and one thing there, and it takes some time. And since I never take five minutes to tell anybody what's going on, I figured I would let everybody know. So now you all know what's going on with the site and the fact that my archive section on the site has been updated and made a little bit more user-friendly. Now, uh, Steve, there's something else I'd like to get into. Um, right. right away, we, uh, we can get into Obamacare at the uh, bottom of the hour. Last uh, segment, we'll spend ripping apart Obamacare. Uh, in fact, we can even get into it uh, a little bit in a few minutes uh, if we have time. But first, I want to talk about breaking news. John Kerry uh, to sign the uh, the UN Arms Treaty tomorrow. That's what the AP is reporting. Now, people are going, oh my God, oh my God, does that mean they're going to come take our guns? Well, no, the Senate would have to ratify it first. Just like they still haven't ratified the Law of the Sea Treaty that was signed back in the 90s. Okay? George Bush Sr. signed that. It hasn't been ratified yet. So, it does not mean... Uh, that uh, it was either the late '80s or early '90s when he signed that, but it it doesn't it doesn't mean any, I mean it it's one step closer. But if he signs it, what what that shows you is that they're traitors, because everybody overwhelmingly opposes that, and they're like, well, we know what's better for you, so we're going to do it anyway. 
So what does that tell you? They're not really representing you. They're dictating to you what's going to be done. Yeah, that's absolutely it. And it is, uh, you know, it is constitutionally treason. It really is because you so know, let him do it, and then he commits treason, and now we have reason to t- prosecute him and you know deal with him accordingly, as yeah. Joe would say, hang a palooza. Well, you you know these people are going to have to face some sort of uh, retribution eventually. There's going to have to be a reset, as we know, Popeye. I mean, look at Obama is addressing the United Nations today, saying that we live in a safer and more stable world in the last five years, which coincidentally, um, you know corresponds with his time in office of course but no no it's not a safer more stable world we almost had world war three just about a week and a half ago and the idiot almost launched it uh, thank god romney did not get elected friends because he was tight with bb netanyahu and uh they would not have even bothered to talk to congress if romney was elected so friends you got to understand that you know popeye and i exposed romney for what he was that doesn't mean we like obama at all and just as Kerry signed this, is signing this thing tomorrow, I guess it is, Popeye, he's going to go ahead and sign the U.N. Small Arms Treaty. Is that what you're saying, or has he already signed it? Yeah, well, no, that's what the AP is reporting, that he's going to report, or he, uh, Kerry is going to sign the uh, arms treaty tomorrow. That's what uh, gunssavelives.net ha- uh, has it up. It says the Associated Press is reporting, and then there's a link to the Associated Press, uh, the AP article, right from, yeah, it's right on the front, AP official, Kerry to sign landmark arms trade treaty. Good. He'll commit treason, and then we have a reason to arrest him. So, there yeah, you these, go. They're going to have to face some retribution sooner or later, and I don't know whether it's going to come peacefully. I mean, it would, wouldn't it be nice if they just faced off against a very over-ominous uh, uh, and, and completely overpowering you know, set of circumstances uh, brought on by the citizens of this country, and they said, you know, you're either going to step down or we're going to put you through the entire ringer, which means that, you know, we, we, I don't... Well, no, I don't think there should be any... I mean, they could make a deal with them, and then as soon as they step down, arrest them anyway, but there shouldn't be... These people shouldn't get deals. I mean, they, I don't think any of them should get deals. I think they should be yanked out of office, and that's it. And, you know, anybody, the, the police, the military, if you stand in the way, well, then you're violating the Constitution. They're traitors. You people should actually be the ones arresting them. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, isn't it amazing? Removing them from office and then following procedure, there's people that could, the proper people that could take their, that could take their place. And if there isn't, because you keep having to arrest all these crooked people, well, then you got to do what you got to do. Or I guess we're going to have to have an emergency election and elect new officials and make sure that, you know, well, uh, what could, what could happen to our government? Uh, The people will lose faith in their government. No. No, see, that's a lie. When they tell you that if they fix anything, the people will lose faith in their government, no, that's, that's wrong. See, if you fix things, people will start to begin to have faith in the government. That's why, why do you think people don't like cops anymore? Because cops are constantly getting caught doing things they shouldn't do, and then when they do it, they, they get called to the carpet, they get whatever, and the police chief will be like, oh, well, it's justified. Or the sheriff will be like, it's justified. So they'll shoot a 10-year-old kid in the face in a SWAT team raid and say, well, you know, it was justified. We didn't know that, they, 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 you know, the, we thought that, um, uh, you know, she, she was a bad guy or my gun misfired. It was an accident. But nobody, nobody gets in trouble. Oh, well, that officer, you know, he feels bad. Oh, that's nice. I'm glad the officer feels bad. A little girl is dead. Yeah. I'm actually talking about a real case. Go look, up, go look up the SWAT team officer's gun misfiring and shooting a little girl in the head about a year and a half ago, two years ago. Okay? But that's okay because, hey, they're cops, right? It's okay. It's okay because they're cops. So they can shoot and kill people. But if you shoot and kill people, we need to have gun control laws. Does that make any sense? And by the way, I made this point the other day. Um, I don't know how how the media is not getting checked on this. There's so many people like not paying attention anymore. Everybody's like, "Oh my God, it's a conspiracy!" Can everybody stop? Yes, I okay. I can see how there's there's probably something shady going on with the mind control, the shooter, and everything. But nobody's focusing on the argument that's at hand. We need tougher background checks. When they do focus on it, they they argue it. They actually argue the point. No, stop arguing the point. You tell them it's already an invalid argument. Well, what do you mean? Here's how it's an invalid argument. Tighter background checks for guns will do nothing and stop bad, not stop bad things from happening. The U.S. government did a background check on this guy. Whether it was a private company that did him for him or not, the background check done on this guy is more thorough than the background check done when you buy a gun. Okay? And he passed it. So, if... 
if a, a they're, they're, that's a red, that's you could say, well, that's proof that they they let it happen, whatever, blah 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 blah. But if that background check let this guy get clearance and didn't stop a bad thing from happening, right? What makes you think making tougher background checks for guns are going to stop bad things from happening? Obviously, your BS background checks don't work already. It's like the Boston bombing marathon. After that, everybody, or the Boston marathon bombing, everybody's like, oh my God, we need to, uh, uh, you know, we, we need stricter laws, and oh my God, we, we need, you know, body scanners, and TSA should be ever at every event, you know, fingering you and making sure that there's no explosives up inside you, pretty much. I mean, just, we need tighter, bigger laws. Go, get rid of guns. Oh my God, police state, more cops, blah, troops in the streets. Oh my God, be afraid, be afraid, be afraid. Yet, um, you guys had this super secret NSA surveillance program where you're going through everybody's daughter's underwear drawer and reading their diaries pretty much, okay? Reading everybody's emails, listening to everybody's freaking phone conversations, recording it all. Oh, we can't do that, right, Hayden? Bullshit. Okay, oh, we don't have the technology. Right, we can put a rover on Mars, on another planet, but we can't record audio here. Really? Really? But none of that prevented the Boston bombing, Right? Terrorists, if, if, I'm to, if I'm to believe the official story, terrorists got through, Steve. Yeah, they did. Mm-hmm. So, so how, did, how did this NSA surveillance and all of this stuff save us if they couldn't catch bad guys? I guess it's a waste of money and we should focus our attention elsewhere, huh? Yep, and especially when you have SEAL Team 6 or Kraft International or people like that running drills and all this kind of stuff before the bombing starts. And, you know, Papa, you and I were on the air the night that happened. We were already calling it a false flag. I'm more convinced now, especially with the shooting of this friend of the Sarnef brothers, you know, with the, by the FBI and everything like that. There's something very, very wrong with all of this. And it can't possibly be anything related to the uh, background checks to the the abilities or the uh, non-abilities of the NSA spy grid checking and finding people out. It's all about government control. That's all it is. They just want to control us. And there's nothing in legitimate about all these arguments that they're making as they tighten down the screws, taking away our rights, and preparing to bring us into this basic, you know, serf class slave labor system that they're trying to create here. Uh, and people... We got to be careful because they're good at crafting, you know, straw man arguments and red herrings to get people to, you know, go down the path and get caught up in arguments. You got to, you got to really have your 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 trivium goggles on and be able to see what's a logical fallacy and what's not. Yeah, and look at you, people ahead. need to learn this stuff. They need to learn, you know, basic just the basics again, the stuff that's not taught in schools anymore. You know what I mean? Yeah, they they do. I mean, if uh, the American people were given a true education as to the kinds of things that have been going on for the last hundred years since the Federal Reserve Act, and even before, of course, but I mean, it's just gotten worse and worse. I have never seen a time like this in American history, friends, and I'm like, I get to be an old timer. I hate to admit it. I remember the Kennedy assassination. I saw Lee Harvey Oswald shot live on television. That's how old I am, and I've never seen anything like this. This has got to be the brink of, uh, we're, on, we're on the precipice of no return here, uh, Popeye, and we're going to have to do something about it. The question is, how are we going to do it? And we better do it fast. Well, I actually want to show you an example. Um, I have uh, an audio clip I want to play for you guys. Because we're always talking about how you know, the, the police state and you know, cops are dicks because they come out and they tase old ladies for not signing a parking ticket or refusing to you know, sign a parking ticket. Or they shoot a, a lady in a, you know, who is a, a Sunday school teacher through a, a window in her car because she won't open the car window. Uh, and, and, you know, often cops shooting dogs, planting drugs. Just There's so many bad cops out there. You know, the squeaky wheel does get the grease, right? But there's also still good ones out there. And I want to highlight one, because we're always talking negative. There's always a lot of negativity. And I want to talk about Obamacare in the last segment. So before we, uh, we transition into that, because I don't want to uh, you know, be kind of weird to transition back to this, I'll give a, you know, and I always like to put some positivity out. I want to take a few minutes, and I want to highlight some positivity. I want you guys to hear the audio, and I won't interrupt it, at least maybe not too much. But I want you guys to hear as much of the audio as I can fit in here for you. It's not that long. It's only a few minutes of an interaction with a good deputy sheriff's officer okay this is uh open it's an open carry protest and i can't remember uh i think it's up in ohio uh but it's an open carry protest i I have to look at the details but it's here in the states it's an open carry protest and the sheriff's officer obviously they got a phone call uh because people were out uh with guns 
you know, standing on the street corner. And people are afraid because they're taught to be afraid. As I said, right, this country's a bunch of pansies. So everybody's, oh, my God, my God. That's so they called the, the sheriff's department. And the sheriff's officer, you know, he has to come out because somebody called. But he knows what's going on. He knows they're just protesters. Now, listen to this guy's interaction with these people. I want you guys to hear what tr- – this is, this, is this is an example to all police officers and sheriff's officers and government officials, anybody in the military. If you wear a costume for a living and you interact with the public, this is how you should interact with the public. Are you scaring the general public again? Yeah. How's it going, sir? I'm all right. How are you guys? I'm good. How are you? I haven't seen you since uh, 9-11. This is what I call dedication to the cause out here in the rain. Hell yeah. <laughs> Very good. Work. Very good. Hey, How you doing, sir? Good. Yeah. Right on. Yeah. Yeah. Good. Jewel. I'm Nick. Nick? Nice Debbie to meet Jewel. you. Right on. So you guys are dedicated. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. You, do, you, do you see? He just, he, when he introduced himself, he shook their hands. He didn't say, I'm deputy so-and-so. He used his first name. His name is Duel. That's his first name. I, and that's a real first name. I know people with name Duel. So his name's Duel, and he just introduced himself with his first name and shook all of their hands. Wow, wow, what a, oh my God, what a concept! And he's he's not threatened by these guys with guns slung over their shoulders. Listen, to, listen to how he talks to them. Listen. You got Ron Paul signs down there too. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we, we need some. Yeah. We need what about some. Rand Paul. <laughs> oh, that's oh, awesome. Now, do you think that's going to be? Uh, Name recognition thing, Floyd. I would love to. See, I'd love to see it. If, if Republicans can quit bickering amongst each other and you know pick a good candidate, I honestly think the nation is finally yeah. ready. For I like, Rand. I like, I like how Rand Paul kind of is uh, a mixture of like, yeah. I guess Republicanism and like the Ron Paul libertarianism. He's got a good mix of both. Something's got to go. Oh yeah. yeah. You guys know your history about this. Yep. Oh, yeah, yeah. People on coming. Yeah. Exactly. You guys are out here scaring people, so people call, I gotta come. Yeah. You guys yeah. are ex- exercising your freedom of speech, your Second Amendment rights, and yeah. that's all good. Yeah. You guys members of like the NRA or anything? Yeah, I don't, like that? NRA, I'm not a NAGR. member of the NRA. <laughs> right now, well, you're an American citizen. Yeah. Oh, so that's pretty cool. Yeah. <laughs> it works for me. That's kind of the coolest. Yeah. yeah. Right. I'm out to catch bad guys, right. not uh, you know, not people that are exercising their constitutional rights. Right. There you go. Because you know, I mean, who else? So you know what I'm saying? Look at that. Yeah. All these supporters. That's, that's yeah, great. It's uh, you know, you got to look at it like this too. Is that if you have a can of gas in one hand and a lighter in the other, mm-hmm. that's going to scare some folks. Yeah. 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 And that's what a gun's going to do to a lot of the uneducated. Exactly. I grew up in a family of hunters and things like that. So a firearm to me was like, you know, a hammer or a screwdriver. Yeah, a tool. <laughs> a tool or, you know, it's something yeah. recreational. Gotcha. I don't go out and recreate with my chainsaw. <laughs> Some guys might think that's fun. But, you know, it's a tool at the end of the day. Yeah. And you can use it for recreation, use it for hunting, whatever you want to do. Yeah. That's why, that's why we want to come out and assert our rights week in and week out and show people when they drive by, listen, nobody's getting hurt. You know, there's guns out here, but nobody's getting hurt. Yeah, you right. know, and, and develop that. Because a lot of people have never seen a gun like this before. Oh, yeah. Right. But oh, they, they have. It, They've seen it on the news. Oh, yeah. It's bad. Yeah, 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 video yeah, games. Yeah, 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 they see it getting out. We know that. We know that. We all know that. Our approach is like, if they can see it week in and week out, they're going to slowly get desensitized. Right? Listen, it's not as this big, scary thing. It's a serious weapon. But at the end of the day... You guys are educated. Yeah. Most people go to work. Here they are. They're all in this line of traffic coming yes. up. Okay? I get, I get what you're saying. They all, they all go home every day. They they learn what they want to... They don't learn, but they, they see what they want to talk about on the water around the water cooler. Yeah. They hear about Lindsay Lohan. It's, hey, you know, look at over here. You know, here's what the right hand's doing. Yeah. They're paying no attention to the left hand. Exactly. See, I know you guys are out here trying to educate, but we have yeah. to be careful with, with how we do it. Yeah. They're kind of living in a little bubble, and you know, what you some people will say they're sheep, and you know, other people will say, you know what, God bless America, because yep. I don't have to concern myself with that. Yep. But it is their liberty to do so. It is their liberty yep. to do so, like it is your liberty yep. to do this. Yep. I so it. Well, I really, really appreciate you coming out. Yeah, and yeah. this is really awesome. Oh. Thank you. Yeah, we're actually we're meeting up with a couple of officers tomorrow um, at noon to kind of go over. You know, so we're all on the same page. So like, we're not, we're not like bad people. We're just trying to do oh, yeah, right uh, on. Yeah. sort of constitution. 
you know, you guys aren't doing anything wrong, by no means, and that's how we want to keep it. Yep. You know, I don't know if you guys don't intend on scaring anybody, you intend on educating people. Exactly. And, by the way, this is Orion Township, not Lake Orion. Orion Township. I've been, like, on my entire life, always called Lake Orion. Yeah, this is Orion Township because the Lake Orion Village has its own police department. Gotcha. And there was a recent YouTube video that I saw that said the deputies out in Lake Orion are very professional. No, we're Orion Township. Gotcha. We're, 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 I'm not saying that the, the, Lake Orion, the Lake Orion Police Department gotcha. the Lake Orion Police Department is a fine police department. But I'm saying you guys are in Orion Township. So yeah, I just wanted to clarify that. You know, what is Okay, what is the only constitutionally recognized law enforcement agency in the land? Sheriff's Department. Hoorah. Yep. Constitution. Every other one created by statute. Yes. Yep. Okay, that's the FBI, the ATF, your local PDs, everything. DNR, statute, legislature, Congress has created them. The Constitution says the sheriff, when I got into this line of work, because I was a young constitutionalist like yourselves, mm -hmm. I said, I want to work for the sheriff. Very cool. And I could have went somewhere else and got a nice retirement package. All the sheriff pays me well, don't get me wrong. I enjoy working for him. But to me, it's very personal. I hold yeah. it in my heart because it's cool. constitutional. Well, God bless you, sir. Yeah. Right on. All right, guys. Well, be safe. Watch traffic. Watch for an idiot jump in the curb. There's, you know, a couple bars down the strip. It is Friday. <laughs> I don't want a car jump in the curb. Yeah, we're going to jump right about so that. Remember where the pole's at for your safety. <laughs> okay, you guys are on legal property and all that, so... It's, uh, you guys are all good. Stay dry if you can, all right? All right, thank you. Hey, thanks, right, for good. thanks for coming out, yeah. Hey, you bet, man. That is an example of being a constitutional sheriff's deputy. This guy serves in his, as an example to others. And I don't know his name. Uh, uh, you know, he didn't. You notice he didn't. You know, he just said his name's Duel. He didn't introduce himself as I'm deputy so and so, and I'm here to bust your balls, or I'm officer so and so. He didn't come up with his hand on his gun. If you watch the video, he came up strolling up, very relaxed. Didn't have his hand on his gun, didn't have his hand on his taser, didn't have his hand on his radio, didn't walk up all scared and, oh my god, they're going to shoot me, oh my god, they're going to shoot me. Because that's what they teach these guys, often. Oh my god, they're terrorists, they want to kill you. This guy deserves, honestly, this guy deserves some sort of citation for that. Because all too often, you, you see guys getting citations for shooting and killing people and doing horrific things where they don't deserve citations for. And this guy did something... He, I did, you know, something. Some, even if the police don't give it to him, they, I, I think the citizens should give this guy something, make this go viral, and you, because this guy serves as an example to all the other police officers and sheriffs officers out there. And you heard what he said about being a sheriff. He said, "What did he say, Steve?" He said, "What's the only constitutionally recognized, you know, law enforcement office in the United States? Sheriff's office." Yeah, that's what he said. Uh -huh. And he's very well versed on all that. And of course, you know, as we say, though, uh, Popeye, there are people who are the salt of the earth who get into law enforcement. And then there are people who want a power trip. And unfortunately, I'd say about 65% of the people who are now in law enforcement are power tripping people who need to feel the self aggrandizement, if you like, of, of you know, uh, pushing people around or being a big shot or pretending like they're significant. They have no respect for citizenship. They have no basic understanding of how the country works or how their constitutional rights of the citizens should be uh, protected by the police. And so as a result, they look at everybody as a potential target or it's like a fishing trip. You know what I mean? They want to catch the biggest fish they can. Mm -hmm. So they're always, they're always fishing for somebody. They're, they go out hunting, dude. That's exactly what they do. And don't get me, I mean, don't, don't get me wrong either. Um, you know, there are good officers out there. Uh, as you know, there are guys that do, you know, do the right thing. That's why I wanted to play that audio. And I, yeah, I, I know that the, some of the young guys are like, yeah, Rand Paul, well, they'll wake up. But at least these guys are out there doing something, and their 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 engagement with this with the sheriff's deputy was it was great back and forth. I say big oorah to him. Thank you so much, deputy. I salute you, ladies and gentlemen. Stay tuned. We're going to break. We will be right back. We are back, ladies and gentlemen. Final segment for tonight's live edition. September 24th, 2013. Steve, I want to switch gears now because we got about uh, 25, 26 minutes here. I want to get into Obozo Care. 
or uh, you know otherwise known in case people don't know what I'm talking about Obamacare or the Affordable Care Act. Uh, I don't think this country as a whole. Well, I, I shouldn't say that because there's more and more people waking up now. Uh, but uh, there are still certain sections of this country will say that uh, are not prepared for what they are about to see. Veterans already know because we've had socialized health care. Okay, uh, just wait. Just wait till you gotta wait three months for a doctor's appointment or to get things fixed. I waited five years, over five years, to get uh, an injury I had when, from when I was in the military when I was active duty fixed, which actually caused more damage and caused me other injuries, which are permanent. Uh, and actually, because of that, I have to have, and I haven't talked about this on air before, but I have to have another surgery coming up in a few months, probably, uh, where I have to get another, wow. I have to yep. get another body yep. part rebuilt. Uh, otherwise, I'm gonna not have the. I'm gonna lose the functionality of it, and that comes from being forced to wait five years to even get into m the medical system back in the day, and then, you know, taking forever. You know, you get a doctor's appointment, and you see the doctor. Like I, 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 well, I saw the doctor three weeks ago when he first uh, read the MRI results, and he said, "Oh, well, okay, well, I'll make you know, we'll make you an appointment. You come back in a week. We'll do all the stuff and get you ready for surgery and stuff." Okay. Uh, their next available was like a month and a half, two months down the road. And, and that's the way public health system, or the public health system, or public health care, whatever you want to call it, is going to become. It's exactly what people are about to see, Steve. If the doctors that are the old school, the good doctors, not these new doctors that aren't taught about giving uh, you know, away a certain percentage of their, of their time, uh, to uh, charity, which is what doctors used to do and what they're supposed to do, uh, they, they're not they're not taught the same way. They're not taught the same methods. M many of them are dumb because the fishing the pool that they're fishing from is this dumbed down younger generation, right? So you're already starting off with stupider material to play with, lower quality clay or cement. Well, you know, as a foundation, so you can't expect too much. And these older doctors, Steve, they're going to bounce. They're not going to put up with this crap. They're going to be like, you know what? I don't need this crap. I'm going to retire and go do something else. I'll write a book. I'm out. See ya. Yep. That's already happening, too. And as a matter of fact, that's one of the biggest problems that they're going to have. Uh, if you don't like weights at doctor's offices, uh, it's only going to get worse, friends. Don't only just take your lunch. Take your sleeping bag. You're going to be waiting a long time, just like Popeye said. Now, there were some articles that we posted. Of course, originally they said as many as 90% of the doctors or 83% were considering retiring. That doesn't mean they were going to. But there was a more recent one uh, recently that was uh, posted up just uh, not too long ago. And that one was, was telling us that uh, as many as 60% are seriously considering it, and probably 40% will in the next year. There are people that are already leaving. Now, if that's not bad enough, the American Medical Association wants doctors to ration care under Obamacare. Well, they're not going to have any choice. They're going to have to ration care. So that means that you're not only going to wait, but you're going to get the worst care that you know, I mean, you're going to get the cheapest care. Everybody's going to be giving you the bottom of the barrel in health care with this whole thing. Now, what's so in incredibly insane about this is this when this, when this thing it kicks in, uh, Popeye, these politicians who have been for it or have been supporting it, all these people like my Senator Udall, who wrote me a really crazy letter about supporting this thing this, this month, um, you know, these guys are going to be out of work. Next, I mean, there's going to be a furious American public by November of next year. I mean, it's certain death for anybody who supports this. That's why I like what Senator Ted Cruz from Texas is doing right now by filibustering. Not because I expect him to win, but he is fighting like hell to make sure that people understand what's happening here. And these guys are identified with this program. This is something that's a train wreck that should have been abandoned. You know, it would actually be smart for the Republicans to let it go through because then they're going to pick up a lot of seats in, in power and control in November. It would actually be very stupid uh, for Republic, uh, for Democrats to let it go through because it's only going to mean certain death to them eventually and their whole program. It's not going to work. There is no money. There is no money. We can't afford it. That's the big thing. You know, Papa, I'd like to be able to buy a, an ocean cruiser, you know what I mean, a big uh, luxury liner and take all my friends on trips. I only have one problem. I can't afford it. There's no way we can afford this. Already, uh, HMOs and PPOs, especially in places like California, like big names, Kaiser Permanente, Blue Cross, Blue Shield, people like this are dropping out. 
I've seen the exchanges. We've looked at these things. Premiums are going to go up at least 23%, and in some cases, as high as 40 to 50% for lower level health care provisions. And this is not going to be very, uh, this is going to be quite horrible. It's going to be an incredible mess. It is but not people, going to. People think that health care means they're going to, they, they feel like crap. They're going to go to the doctor. The doctor's going a wave a magic wand and you know bing and they're going to walk out of there and glenda the good witch will hit them up on the way out with an actress you know bing and then they're going to everything will be gone that's not how it works or well i'll get some magic medication you know actually crake in the chat room posed a really good point he said everybody's screaming about wanting health care but no one is worried about taking care of their bodies i don't get it if people took care of their bodies you wouldn't need to be worried about, oh, my God, do I have health care? Am I going to go to the hospital? Am I going to get cancer? You wouldn't have to worry about that if you were eating healthier. And I know it's hard. I know it's expensive. I know they're poisoning the food and the water. But that means you have to actively educate yourself and get engaged in this. Okay, That's what that means. Sitting back and playing video games and watching TV is no longer an option. They've already poisoned the food and water supply, and they're screwing our bodies up, and now they want to bring us to the slaughterhouse. Okay? That's what, that's what this obo- obozo care is. It's, it's, it's just ridiculous. And, I mean, how are you going to charge people, Steve? How, how is the IRS? I, I don't understand their thinking. We're going to give you a penalty if you don't buy Obamacare. But, but I, I can't afford it. You know, I, I, I don't use health care. I eat healthy, so I don't – and, you know, I, I make a little bit of money, and what I do make, I, I buy healthy food with. So I don't want to have uh, Obamacare. Well, either you have it and, you know, you, you play nice with us or we're going to charge you $1,500 and then possibly, you know, come after you and everything. Are, really? Are you kidding me? I mean, if, if people can't afford it or don't want it, why would you force it on them unless it – about control. It's not about taking care of you. It's not. Think of it in terms of a, a, a like a, a significant other. If you had a boyfriend or a girlfriend that was overbearing and up in your grill about everything, would people really put up with that for too long a time? No. People would be like, wow, I broke up with that psycho. They're just too overbearing. They were all up in my stuff. They wanted to control everything I did and tell me what I could and couldn't wear and what I could and couldn't eat. Oh, sound familiar? Picture the government like an overbearing spouse. Same thing. They're all up in your business telling you what to do. Meanwhile, they're pouring fluoride in the water and you know, spraying aluminum and barium and strontium in the air. Oh, but don't worry about that. They tase people. Oh, but tasers don't tase people. Even though our bodies run off of electro, uh, you know, uh, electronic or electric impulses, I should say, electricity. We have current flowing through us, but hey. Pay that no mind. I mean, a taser couldn't possibly have any negative effects on a human body, right? No, no. It's just dude, the way we think is so backwards. And, you know, people buy into it, Steve, because they're just, they're uneducated. And that's the problem with Obama. Well, I would say 50-50 now because there's a lot of people that are actually starting to see it. I think there's actually, and it's not, it's not BS. I think that's one of the reasons they, they, they've come out on MSNBC and CNN lately, uh, you know, attacking the GOP wants you to die. I mean, they're just going to. Is that news? By the way, is that being a news anchor or a news, whatever the frig they call themselves nowadays, prestitute? Yeah. Is, is, that, is that really why like, they are prostitutes? But is that really being a, a journalist telling the American people that because the GOP, it's the GOP, blah, 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 trying to make sure you don't get health care because they're racist and they want you all to die? I mean, that's literally what these news outlets are saying to people. That, that's not journalism. That's not journalism. You're supposed to be unbiased. Yeah. I'm, I'm sorry. I'm just, I'm t- you know what, dude? I'm in a mood today, and I'm just over. I am <laughs> no, over man. the BS, Steve. I'm, I'm over That's being good. nice, and I'm over people's crap about this. I'm over people, you know, <laughs> I'm just tired of it. If this country had a bigger set of nuts like we used to, this wouldn't have gotten this far. We need to sack check. I'm sorry, people, if, you, if I'm hurting your sensibilities, but we need to grow up. Okay? We do. Because this stuff is real. You know, a couple of years ago when everybody was, oh, you, you crazy conspiracy theorists, Obamacare is not that bad. Now all of a sudden people are like, hey, you know, maybe Obamacare wasn't such a good idea. Gee, thanks. You know, you give them that, you, you, you turn to the left and you stare at them and you're like, really? Really? Where were you two years ago? Oh, that's right, you were arguing with me telling me it was good and that I just wanted people to die. 
It, it's ridiculous, dude. Oh, it is, man. And you're right, though. A 60%, well over 60% now of the American public, probably close to two-thirds, are waking up to Obamacare and they're realizing it's a disaster. It's like watching the Titanic. I mean, at first, nobody really thinks how, and they don't realize how bad it is. And as you pointed out, Popeye, we can't afford it. See, the, the reality is that these, these people don't understand. There is no money. The government is now so deeply in debt that we'll never see the end of it at this point. There is no economy left for us to recover from. We can't go back to the farmland like we did in the 1930s in the Depression. We're living in card house cities where giant you know, uh, uh, high-rise apartments are going to be full of people without water, without food. And you think you're going to provide expensive health care? To who? To the doctors that are no longer there that are going, I mean, the doctors aren't going to be there to take care of you. None of this is going to be a reality for any of the, the dreams of, of the change that they believed Obama were going to, was going to bring to them, Papa. It's going to become a nightmare. And they have no realization how fast and how bad this thing is coming down. And all we can do is like what Ted Cruz is doing right now, to stand here on the brink of this thing and say, okay, just want to let you know that this is where it's going. We want to identify where we've been all along, explaining to people that the intrusions into your privacy are only minor. But they're... Their intrusion is well enough. They ask you about your sex life. I was uh, recently went in for a physical. They asked me if I had guns in the house. They said it's on the questionnaire. I got to ask you all this stuff. Do you keep them loaded? All these kinds of things. You know, it was a really odd, odd situation. I was kind of laughing. I thought you, you got to be kidding me. Do you tell them no? Guns scare me. Next question. <laughs> I mean, well, at, the, at that at that time, I that's didn't, the answer that's, they want, uh, right? Or no, the answer they want is, oh yes, I have guns. No, I don't have guns. Next question. Yeah. Why don't you have guns? They frighten me. Well, why are you in the military? I, I stayed away from guns in the military. Yep. You know, or I'm a, I saw what they did in, in the military. They frightened me. No, thanks. Next question. Yeah, I mean, now they're going to be asking you questions about your sex life. Now, you might want to exchange some of that information if you have. What partners have you had in the, uh, yeah. the past uh, 12 months? Do you, and I'm sure that's not going to be the only question. I'm sure the questions will be like, do you, do you have anal sex? Do you do you enjoy uh, multiple partner sex? Ha, have you had sex with more than five people at, at, one t- at one time, or do you do you take do you partake in uh, oral sex? And honestly, it's none of anybody's business what you do in the bedroom behind closed doors. Look, I don't, let's get this straight. I said this a bazillion times. I don't care who you do or what you do in the bedroom, as long as you're not hurting kids and killing people, I'm and hurting animals. I'm fine with it. I don't care. Get your freak on. More power to you. I do not care. Okay, I don't care what your sexuality is. I don't care what you do in the bedroom. It's none of my damn business. Just like it's none of your damn business. I do in the bedroom. Okay, or what Steve does. It's not a doctor's business. And whose business is it of the government to have that in a data file? Well, we need to know because you could be a public health problem. Ah, you see, building a database for what? What are they going to start saying? Oh, you're, you have promiscuous sex. Oh, we have to. We have to cordon you off from the public. We have to quarantine you. Or ration your care, like they're talking about. The AMA is saying that. They're suggesting that this is where we're going. Rationed care, friends. It's, you're not going to get more care. You're going to get less, and it's going to be more. Uh, it's going to be worse quality care. And, and like we said before, you know, Papa, I don't care if you're talking to your doctor. You want to tell him about your personal life. He's going to keep his own records. That's not a questionnaire. What we're talking about here is, like you said, this is a survey, a questionnaire, a checkoff list. This is a database is what it is. It has nothing to do with your health care. It's just an intrusion into your privacy so that they can keep up with you and decide if you get this or you get that. I mean, people are putting their entire health care in the hands of a government that can't balance its books and can't pay for it. They have no idea what they're getting into here with this thing. And so I, I say it's power to Ted Cruz. Uh, Power to everybody who's standing up at this moment. Um, you know, now, the only reason why Boehner shifted on this thing in the House, Popeye, was because there were far too many Republicans already who were saying, we're going to stand our ground in the House of Representatives. He was looking at being thrown out as Speaker, which he should anyway. I don't like the guy. But he had to go along with this, and he's made his statements pretty clear. clear. The House of Representatives have made their statements pretty clear. Now, what are they going to do if they defund the government? We can into all of that because you see now they want to scare you they say well, they, you know theoretically it shouldn't affect your veterans benefits it shouldn't affect a payment to troops medicare medicaid all that stuff is you know i mean we may have to shut down some national parks and of course we can't process your your passports or get your tax refunds back to you how, although we collect about, your money how about we stop paying congress and the president and all all, all of their administration how about we start with that first 
That's a great idea. As a matter of fact, that's the first. As a matter of fact, what we ought to do is cut their, you know, 72%. Well, they're, they're public servants. They see, the whole idea of doing this wasn't to be career politicians. The, the founding fathers, and I, they, they, I guess maybe they should have made it a little more clear, but they, the, the idea, the original intent was to not have people go there. These guys went there. They had money. They knew they were better off than a lot of people in the country, and they considered that they're public servants. Many of them didn't pull paychecks. I mean, some of them did, but many of them didn't pull paychecks. Some of them only got paid to, you know, maybe cover their a clothing allowance or something for the clothes that they wore and stuff, which is fair. But I mean, these these guys didn't want money because the idea was that you give back to the country by serving for a few years uh, and helping the country run, uh, you know, as a well-oiled piece of machinery. And that's not what's going on. These people are career politicians. So first and foremost. Let's make it a volunteer job again. There's volunteer fire departments all over this country. I was a member of one for six and a half years. My brother was in for like 14. My father was in for over 20. My uncle was in for 20-something years. Okay? So guess what? If we can do it and volunteer fire departments across this country can do it for well over 200 years, then they can do it. Don't let them get paid. Give them a little bit of a clothing allowance. Cut their paychecks off. Cut off their benefits. Clear their benefits that they have now, their health benefits, and make them all subject to Obamacare. How come, how come the IRS was pleading with Congress, please, we don't, we don't want to have our people at the IRS subject to Obamacare, but yet they're going to be the ones enforcing it on you? How come Congress scrambled to make sure that they and their staffers weren't subject to Obamacare ever? Right, right. And and seventy two percent of their premiums are paid for. You know, you, you find it's very you're, it's hard to find a company that'll pay fifty percent of your premiums in in a you know private sector business right now. And they have they have all the stuff there. They they know it's not any good. They don't want it, and they're trying to force it on us. That is the most obvious you know, hypocritical position that is completely revealing of what's gone wrong with this thing. I mean, the, the American public's going to be furious with this when this happens. They have no idea and this is all going to start in just a matter of days so now what do they do defund the government and so they tell people social security checks and and medicare medicaid won't be affected but they will after about three or four weeks this is all going to start to kick in the government is the biggest business partner in america right now the gdp is a good portion of government spending friends i mean they're to start shutting down government spending unless they're holding us hostage to pass this thing. And the Democrats are using the scare tactics to try to tell everybody, if you don't pass this, look what the Republicans are going to do. You know, I mean, here we are trying to get a balanced budget. We're kicking the can down the road every month for $85 billion paid right into the Federal Reserve to only service the debt just barely service the debt on what they've run up on us, Popeye. And they want to add 25% of the economy to the government control? I mean, your health? It's absolutely absurd. And so this is a, a moment of, of complete idiocy. Well, in because terms of- they, this whole thing, this whole, this whole lie is sold to people under the complete fallacy that the government's job is there to protect you. That's not the government's job. It's not. People go, oh, it's the government's job to protect you from bad people. It's the government's job to protect you from yourself. No, it's not the government's job to protect you from anything. It's the government's job to make sure the Constitution and its amendments are carried out and that people's rights are not violated and that things run smoothly. That is all. It's the government. It's job to make sure the janitor is there to clean the floor. It, it, if you look at, you know, I like the analogy that KRS-One has given. You look at it like a McDonald's, okay? The government's job is, to, the president's job and his government, okay, the president is like the manager of McDonald's and the government is like the staff work there. That is it. Does the staff at McDonald's tell you what to do at your house? No. They make sure the floor is clean, that the tables are clean, and they're establishment so that when you come in you can get proper service that's what the government is for they're not there to wipe your ass they're not there to be your nanny the problem is people have been conditioned over the course of time that that's what government is for people don't even realize al sharpton got into it with uh, this representative the other night on his show over whether or not we have a, a democracy and the guy said well we're not actually in a democracy Democracy. We have a constitutional republic, and the guy and Al was like, "Oh, so now we don't live in a democracy? I guess I'll just tell all these millions of people that think that we live in a democracy." He's like, "You have 
crazy. You crazy, sir. You have no idea what you're talking about. We don't live in a democracy. And, you know, I, you know people could say, well, that's a, you know, that's a, a talking point. No, I guarantee you Al Sharpton is so ignorant, he actually believes what he said. Because he's an idiot, too. And he buys into it. Now, Al's a, a mouthpiece. I have no use for him anyway. Two words on a brawly. But he, I'm willing to bet he actually believes that line of crap, Steve. That, oh, we live in... We don't live in a, I mean, literally, that's the kind of retardation that you're dealing with out there. So people don't look, people don't know what's coming. They really don't. This is, this can be stopped, by the way. It's not like it's, you know, oh my God. Uh, you have to realize what's going on and we have to stop it. Look, you, if I, I'm down with people getting health care that need it, that are sick. I'm not against it. And it could be properly funded. Actually, we could probably, we could probably set something up the proper way for the first time if we didn't, A, rush to do it. Because why does there have to be a rush to do it? Oh, my God, people are going to die. There's such a rush. We have to pass it, but it's not implemented yet. So I guess a couple of years later, the people are still sick, right? Maybe some of them died. Yeah. So why was there such a rush to pass the law? Why is there always a rush? Oh, my God, we got to do it. Oh, my God, we got to do it. Fear, 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 fear. We got to rush. We got to rush. Fear, 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 fear. Push it, push it, push it. That's their, that's their, their friggin' tempo, and I'm tired of it. Okay? You know what? I say we get rid of this thing. Just completely repeal it abolish it. Now, it doesn't mean, oh my God, people are going to die in the streets. No. Along with getting rid of that, we should also pull back our troops from all these countries, stop all these wars of aggression. Right? If we weren't spending billions of dollars on that stuff and didn't waste billions of dollars already in Iraq and Afghanistan, we could actually build the, uh, a proper functioning healthcare system that, that doesn't have to be socialist uh, so to say, people could pay into it in one way or another if, if they wanted to, maybe, you know, have a copay system. But it would be a way for the – if the government really was concerned. I mean, if th- this, is, this is under the scenario of if the government really gave a crap about the people in this country. But no, instead, we don't focus on maybe um, promoting eating better like, you know, organic foods and stuff like that. No, no, no. In fact, we promote quite the opposite. Where organic foods are like Dr. Oz said for elite and you can you GMOs are just fine. Who cares if they're not no long term tests? You are the long term tests. Like that Canadian broadcaster told that fourteen year old girl that was taking them on. We are the long term tests. No, sir. You want to be the long term tests? You can be. I didn't sign up to be a friggin' lab rat. Okay. okay? Don't speak for me, because you don't. And you don't speak for millions and billions of other people. Yeah, this is uh, this is borders on one of the most uh, basic intrusions into our human rights that, that could possibly come down the pike, and that is, you know, forcing us to adapt to a system that has virtually no capability of taking care of us and paying out the yin yang to get. And as you said, Popeye, there are going to be people who said, "I will go ahead and pay the fine of fifty hundred dollars rather than pay the advanced premiums, which I will put the balance into some kind of a savings." account for myself to take care of myself if I get sick. That may not be the best solution, of course, but they will look for any kind of private health care they can find. They will be jumping off this ship like rats off of a sinking ship, man. That's that's how fast it's going to happen here. There, there's no way they're going to fund it. There's no way they're going to be, the, there's not going to be the money. You know, you, you don't... You, people... How about we stop giving foreign aid to countries like Egypt and Israel? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, that's one good... Oh, now you're being anti Semitic Popeye. Who you know what? Israel doesn't need our money. They have enough of their own. Maybe maybe they'd stop picking fights, huh? If we stopped giving them all this military supplies and money and everything else, and maybe they'd stop picking fights with people they shouldn't be picking fights with. Hmm? Maybe they'd back off a little bit. Maybe yeah. keep them in check. As for Egypt, stop giving them money. Stop sending our money. Well, we have to give this country a couple. Of- million dollars in aid. It's the right thing to do. After all, we're America. We need to lead the world. Um, hey, guess what? Our streets are crumbling and our bridges are literally falling down. We have people dying in this country. These bridges are collapsing. It's happened past couple of years. But hey, who cares about that, Steve? Let's send money yeah, look- to a foreign country. Right. If we just brought the troops home, we could pay them here and they'd be spending their money here. That'd be a huge boost in our income here. In our, I mean, it, it's certainly the, that money should be spent by our troops and armed forces right here in the United States rather if, than in if Germany, we stop Afghanistan, giving, Afghanistan or someplace. No, yeah. Dude, you're right. If we stop giving everybody else all this money, if we stop sending troops all over the world, brought them all back, close down on these unnecessary bases in places we do not need them, okay, oh my god, if we do the Russians and the Chinese, oh my god. 
Okay, fine. If you have to have a strategic thing somewhere, whatever. But you don't need to have. St- we don't need to have every base that we have. It's really just 110 percent out of control. Stop the wars of aggression. Okay, pull back. But then that would mean we were wrong. But do you want to keep spending money to prop up some false idea that we were right and justified in doing what we did? No. How about we just atone for what we did, admit we were wrong, atone for it, and move on and stop wasting money and lives? No, we can't do that. You know, and that's exactly the position that the, re- that the Democrats are in right now. They can't back out of this. Ideologically, they're sold on this idea, and they know themselves it isn't going to work. And that's why I'm saying it's certain death in them politically. The smartest thing they could do would be to let the Republicans take it down. And, the, and actually, the smartest thing the Republicans can do is let, let it pass so they can blame the Democrats when it dies. Well, we'll see. We'll see what happens. Steve, we're out of time. Man, two hours went by so fast. Thank you again for coming on, brother. Hey, my pleasure, man. Good to be back with you. Good to hear you up there and running. And I hope folks will support you at federaljack.com, buddy. Ladies and gentlemen, we are out of time. We are out of here. I'll see you all again live tomorrow night. Love you all. See you then.